I got an Asus Tough gaming laptop. I'm going to do some upgrading for the customer. I'm going to show you how I do it. Let's get started. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I have a customer's Asus Tough gaming laptop. The exact model is FX505DT. Dash UB52. It's a 15.6 inch full HD display. Got a nice little RGB keyboard. Has the uh, Ryzen 5 3550H processor. Uh, it only has a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD and 8 gigabytes of memory. Uh, and there is a, um, I believe there's a hard drive bay in here to mount a um, two and a half inch hard drive or SATA drive. And if that's the case, I'm going to put in. A hard drive for extra storage. I'm going to upgrade the SSD in here currently to a brand new Western Digital Black SN750 NVMe SSD. These are pretty fast little drives. I use them quite a bit and they work great. And I'm going to do a little memory upgrade. It's got 8 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM, so I'm going to add another 8 gig stick of 2400 hopefully to give him some dual channel capabilities for his games and whatnot. So like I said, it's got RGB keyboard. Over here on the side, we have nothing on this side. But as all gaming laptops, we have our ethernet port, HDMI, three USB ports, two 3.1, and I don't believe that's a charging port. You got a headphone jack, of course your power cord. All right, so I'm just gonna shut it down. Oh, and I'm going to do a clean install because he has absolutely nothing on here. His 256 drive was getting full really quick, so he got a little frustrated and he just kind of zapped it, did a restore. Took it all the way back to like 1903 edition of Windows 10, so I'm going to do a clean install of Windows 10 20 H2 for him. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it down, <clears throat> get the new parts in it, make it a much better little gaming laptop. All right, once it shuts down here. All right, it's off. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna remove the screws. So I am going to use, I'm gonna grab my PH0 or number zero Phillips screwdriver here, guys. A one, PH1 would probably work just fine, but I feel better with the zero and I'm going to lay out my screws because sometimes they're different lengths. So we want to get the right screw back in the right hole. Like I always say, a long screw in a short hole, not good. <laughs> Actually, been there, done that. Yeah, I've had one poke through the... <laughs> I had one come up through rest. the palm rest before. Yep. Years ago, I just wasn't paying attention. I got in a hurry and told the customer, well, they can just kind of tie their pen to it or something. No, I gave him a brand new laptop actually. Felt really bad. You can see these screws are different lengths here, so we want to make sure, like I said, these back ones are quite long compared to the ones on the front. So you can see they're, they're pretty long there. Oops. Part of the learning process sometimes too when you make mistakes like that. You know, 25 years of doing this kind of stuff. Nobody's perfect. You learn something new every single day. Yep. Every computer I touch or open or work on is always a learning experience. Always something fresh and new. Which is why I like doing what I do. And when you make those mistakes then you know you're never going to make them again. That is very true. Alright, one more screw here guys. Nice little short one in the middle there. Alright. And these tufts always open really easy. We're going to get into this little seam right here, my little spudger tool. I have links down below of all these tools that I use to do this. So it's quite easy. Just get it in there, get it started, and these usually peel off quite easily. And this one probably will be a pain in the butt, but oops. Now look at that. Piece of cake. Now with any project like this, before you go inside your laptop, always make sure you're protected against static electricity. Use a wristband, an anti-static mat, or wooden surface, something. My bench tops are all anti-static. They're designed for this kind of work. They're scratch proof. They don't scratch anything. 
as well as our floor. So just keep that in mind when you get inside here poking and prodding around. First thing I'm going to do guys, I'm going to disconnect the battery real quick right here. This little connector will slide back towards the battery. We don't want any juice flowing around in there while we're doing our modifications. Quite, oops, can you see that? Mm -hmm. I've got my plastic tool here. I'm just going to nudge it out gently. Just like that. Uh-oh. That was weird. Had some power light come on over there. Very bizarre. Anyway, ah, they don't give you a lot of extra anything here. So before I do anything, I'm going to open it back up carefully here. I'm going to hit that power button to see. We had some residual juice in there when I was disconnecting that battery. It lit up for a split second. We should be okay now, though. All right, so we have... <clears throat> He has 8 gigs of DDR4 2400, so I'm going to add another 8 gigs of DDR4 2400. Got some Corsair RAM here, good RAM. Just make sure it goes all the way in. Just like that, we get a good click. Uh, yep, and make sure the little clips come over the edge of the module there. So we got that. Here's our 2.5 inch bay. And our SATA connector is right on the main board, so there's no cable. So I'm going to get that enclosure out of there, mount that. I got a new Toshiba one terabyte hard drive. I'm going to put in there for him. I threw that in for free. He's just excited to get it back to get his stuff back on it. And there's only two screws for that drive bay. So we're just going to put it in there, make sure our line's up, label's going to face down. Just like that, it's one of those. So I got to grab a bag of screws here real quick, guys. Just got to get some mounting screws to put that in the caddy. Be a pretty quick little upgrade, but it's going to be fairly substantial for the most part. Oops. Good quality tools is very important, guys. Always use good, good screwdrivers with good tips, good spudger tools, all that fun stuff. Yes, it's a mechanical drive. You could easily put a two and a half inch SATA drive in there, but we're not going to do that. And these back ones are always a bugger to get lined up there. All right, we got the drive mounted in there. This one only took three mountings. Screws, as you can see, there's not one here. So we're going to slide it back into place, just like that. Don't need that. Those are my bag of tricks over there. <clears throat> and we're going to secure this back. When we get back after the fresh install, we have, you have to go into your disk management to initialize this disk. Now the customer had opened this up previously, young man that owns it. I'll set him up with a little enclosure he can put this in and have a 256 gigabyte external SSD. Ah. Let me get this tape off of here. Stuck. Come on. All right, that little Kind of a useless little, oh, I see that on the board, little heat pad here. I don't need that. Curious what brand of drive that was. Oh, good old SK Hynix. I see those all the time in these. All right, so we're going to put in our new Western Digital Black SN5 or 750, one terabyte in its place. I'm going to throw a little heat pad on it just for gaming sakes. OK, 
Okay, I always do that. This is it right here, right? A little mounting screw for the yeah. M.2 teeth. Dale. Sorry, been a long day, guys. Bought my fifth or sixth one of these today. Let's secure that back in there. We're good. All right, heat pad. Get to my little heat pad box here. I got one sitting right here, waiting for a home. Now, the labels on these act as a heat as well, but I'm gonna lay this right across it here. I wanna see how that lines up in there. I think that goes like that. So there is some ventilation. That's good, there's some ventilation holes right over top of the NVMe SSD right here. They go all the way through, so that's really good. Could probably not have to put that on there and you'd be okay, but we're gonna do that. For all you gamers out there yelling at me when I don't do that, but I've never had a problem. I've never had a computer come back from overheating. So we got our new one terabyte hard drive, two eight gig sticks of DDR4, and our new NVMe drive. Now I gotta hook the battery back up. We're gonna do a clean install and we should be good. All right, these are tough to get back in. Give me a little spudger here. Like I said, there's not a lot of playroom here. Shoot, I might even have to take the battery out. I know my hand's in the way, but so you gotta get it lined back up in here to slide back in. See, I'm getting it started there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my thumb. Get that press back in there. All right, that looks good. All right, for now, I'm gonna set this back, <clears throat> back on there, gently. And I'm just gonna set it. I'm not gonna screw it or secure it yet. Here it is. Give that back to him. And we're gonna plug in our power brick here. This is 150 watt AC adapter that comes with this tough book, or tough book, <laughs> Asus Tough. I just worked on a couple of those last week. Plug in our AC adapter and here's my USB drive with Windows 10 on it. Uh, you can easily make one of these. It has to be eight gigabyte flash drive or larger. Download the Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, which is free. I'll have a link down below where you can get that from Microsoft to create this to install your version of Windows. And yes, it will activate. Put in the USB port. Power it on and should default to that drive for booting. Sometimes it takes, oh, it posted with the new RAM in there. I just want to make sure. Looks like we're going to be okay. <clears throat> It should default to that drive to boot. It looks like it is. Sign in here. All right, guys. I'm going to turn down Cortana here a little bit. Get, walk through this setup real quick. All right, let's dig in. All right, United States. U.S. layout. I'm going to skip additional layouts. We can change all this later if you want in settings. I always choose I don't have internet at this point. That way I'm not forced to set up a Microsoft account or log in. So I just hit continue with limited. Put user for right now. No password. If you want to log in and set up a Microsoft account or use your existing email account, that's totally optional. I'm going to disable all this stuff and hit accept. Not now. Just want to get into Windows. Then I'll get all the drivers, all the updates. I'm going to go to Asus website and get the gaming apps and everything for the RGB and all that good stuff. I think it's the Armory Crate. We gotta allocate that one terabyte or initialize that one terabyte mechanical drive we put in there. Be a good little upgrade for them. Yeah, 
and plus it'll end up with a two fifty six gigabyte SSD that you can throw into in a little enclosure or just keep it as a spare I guess. Yeah, that's alright, they'll wait. They're early as heck. <clears throat> Got somebody showing up that ain't supposed to be here for 15 minutes. Quick, run, lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Almost there. It turns dark and then right. Leave everything to us. Yay, we're there. All right. I'm not worried about drivers. I'm going to go into Task Manager here. Boom, hit Enter. Check my performance. Now we have 16 gigs of DDR4 2400 in dual channel. I'm going to right click on the Start button. We're going to go to Disk Management and make this full screen here. Here's our one terabyte hard drive. I'm going to do simple volume. Next, 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 next. I'm, set, I'm doing all the defaults. You could partition if you wanted to, but there's really no need to. But you can if you want. So there. Now I'll do a quick. Uh, what am I doing? Let's go to this PC. So now we got our Western Digital Black SSD and our one terabyte hard drive. You can right click on this if you want and hit rename and we're good to go. I appreciate you all watching. I hope the video was helpful guys. If you like it, give me a like. If you loved it, give me a sub. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.